This is the story of X and Co. Flight 3589. On the 18th of March 2010, an Antonov 26 was flying from Helsinki to Tallinn. Now, Exxon was a cargo airline, and so there weren't that many people on board, just about six people. Interestingly, their takeoff weight was 23,954 kilos or 52,800 pounds. That was just 46 kilos or 101 pounds less than their maximum takeoff weight. I mean, had they had another adult on board, they would have been overweight. Most of the flight was boring, nothing out of the ordinary. Within a short time, the plane was getting ready to land at Tallinn, runway 26 to be precise. The pilots were busy with their checklists and they needed to run them before landing. They were just seven nautical miles from the runway when they noticed a smell in the cockpit. Something seemed to be burning. A smoky smell permeated the cockpit. They noticed that the left-hand engine was vibrating much more than usual. So, out of an abundance of caution, the pilots decided to shut the left-hand engine down. With the engine depowered, the pilots decided to continue the approach. Runway 26 was starting to loom in front of them. But the pilots were having a hard time keeping the plane on the glide slope and lined up with the runway. The plane was much harder to fly with one engine out of commission. Slowly, they started to drift to the left of the runway. They were not configured for landing. The pilots knew that they could not salvage this approach. They needed to go around. The plane made a low pass over runway 26. They were so unprepared for this landing that by the time that they overflew the runway, they had not even dropped the gear yet. To go around, the pilot selected max power on the right-hand engine, and the AN26 started to climb, slowly. But that didn't last long as the plane cleared a highway at the end of the runway. The AN26 started to drop. It slowly began to lose altitude. The plane clipped a few treetops and then crashed onto the surface of a frozen lake. The nose of the plane broke through the ice, but the ice didn't crack. They were safe on the surface of the ice. None of the six people on board were harmed, but that could not be said for the marine life in the lake though. The crash leaked jet fuel into the water and the lake got contaminated. The problem was that this lake, Lake Ulmist, provided 90% of the drinking water that the city of Tallinn needed. With that, a new race was on. The plane had about three tons of fuel as per newspaper reports that came out after the accident and almost half of it had leaked out onto the ice. Emergency workers were using absorbent mats to prevent the fuel from reaching the water. While they did that, other crew members pumped the remainder of the fuel out of the tanks. Adding to their worries, the ice had started to melt and the plane was slowly sinking. But ultimately, they pulled it off. Not much damage was done to the lake and they were able to recover the plane. The report said that it was a costly affair to prevent the fuel from leaking into the water. I wonder how much it cost and who got stuck with the bill. With the plane out of the ice, the Estonian investigators got to work. They wanted to know why the engine gave out. To find out, they tore the left-hand engine down. Inside, they found that the ball bearings inside the engines were broken and that there were signs that the ball bearings were not rolling causing an insane amount of friction and heat. The oil pathways in the engine were also examined, and they were found to be full of coke and metal debris. The ball bearings were disintegrating and jamming up the engine. In fact, the compressor shaft had been pushed forward by the metal debris, causing it to rub up against other parts of the engine. Basically, the left-hand engine had been destroyed from the inside. The source of all of this was traced to the compressor's real axial bearings, which had broken. Adding to this, there was a duct to regulate the temperature inside the engine, which had also failed. This meant that the temperature in the engine was very high, leading to coke formation. This further messed with the cooling of the engine and caused the engine to overheat, which caused even more ball bearings in the engine to lock up, causing even more heat. It was a vicious cycle. At that point, the engine was just a runaway heat generation machine. But why did the axial bearings fail? Well, as it turned out, the lubrication system of the left-hand engine 
had been malfunctioning for quite some time. And so as time went on, the bearings weren't being lubricated as they should have been. After a while, they just failed. That's all well and good. Well, not really. It was really bad for the crew and the plane and the lake. But the failure of one engine should not just bring a plane down. All twin engine planes are designed to fly and land with just one engine. Crews are also trained to fly and land the plane if it only has one engine. So that leaves the question, why did Flight 3589 crash? When the investigators looked at the data from the flight data recorder, they saw that it was indeed possible for the crew to land on runway 26 after the engine had failed. They looked at the action of the crew to see what went wrong. The pilots actually tried to turn on the APU after the left-hand engine had failed. Now, the Antonov 26 has a very special APU. The APU, or the auxiliary power unit, on most planes provides the plane with power if the engines aren't working or if the plane is on the ground and not connected to ground power. But on the AN26, the APU is also a jet engine providing about 800 kilograms or 1800 pounds of thrust. This is meant to improve takeoff performance, and pilots turn off the APU after takeoff as it is not really intended to be used in any other phase of flight. How does that work though? If you're at the gate and you have the AP1, do you have a jet engine producing almost a ton of thrust pushing you forward? Or can you turn off the jet engine and use the APU as an APU? So many questions. I need answers. Now, I know what you're thinking. Could the plane have climbed out without the APU? And the short answer is yes. The airplane manufacturer says that with one engine out, the AN26 can climb at 140 feet per minute with the other engine at max power, assuming that the plane is in a clean configuration. But despite this, the pilots tried to restart the APU, presumably for the additional thrust. But attempting a restart of the APU had a hidden cost. One, it took the pilot's attention from actually flying the aircraft. And two, for the APU to restart, you needed to open this vent, which increased the aerodynamic drag of the plane. The Antonov 26's climb rate with one engine out was 140 feet per minute. Having a drag-inducing vent open would cause that value to drop even more. But the APU never came online. Listening to the CVR, they found out that the crew did not follow the correct procedure to restart the APU. The procedure to restart the APU was a 15-step one, and there was no indication that they had stuck to the correct procedures. That neatly brings us to the pilots and the actions that they took. The CVR revealed that the pilots had improperly followed multiple checklists, especially the checklist for single-engine operations. They simply just didn't follow it. On top of that, the crew were uncoordinated and they were not focused on getting their plane down safely. Now, this was a bad situation to be in, but it was made worse by the fact that they were in a situation with bad visibility. At that point, they did not know if they could go around with the power that they had, and they started deviating from the path that they should have been on. This explained why the plane was not configured for landing, even though it was so close to the runway. The crew wanted to conserve energy, thus they didn't extend the flaps or drop the gear. But this meant that when the runway finally did come into view, they were completely unprepared to land. So the captain tried to go around, but the plane did not react as expected. And in a moment of desperation, the captain decided to put the plane down on the ice as he thought that that was his only option. Here's a quote from the report. The captain applied full power over the runway and tried to climb. But based on inadequate flight performance of the aircraft, crash landed the aircraft on lake ice as only realistic option to survive. End quote. In the story of Flight 3589, a routine engine failure, as if any engine failure is ever routine, turned into something much more serious than it ever should have been, because the pilots did not react in the correct way. As per the manufacturer's data, this plane was flyable on just one engine. They could have made it 
had they just kept their cool and if they had not let their emotions get the better of them. I know that it's hypocritical of me to say that they should have kept their cool when I'm in a warm, cozy bed writing this, having never been in a situation like that. But stories like the Hudson Miracle or Qantas 3-2 or the Gimli Glider have all shown us that keeping your cool might make the difference between landing on a runway and landing on thin ice. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you want to watch another video, how about this video on what we do after we find the wreck of MH370? In that video, I look at the investigative techniques that investigators would use once the wreck is found. You can find a link to that on the screen and in the description. That's it for this video. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I will catch you guys next time. Stay safe.